Curtis Calhoun here with MMA News, and right now I am joined by Blake Builder coming off of his UFC debut win at UFC 284. How's it going, Blake? We're out here in Perth, back to, to California tomorrow. We got a 20-hour flight ahead of us, but it ain't nothing new. We just did it a week ago, so we're chilling. First things first, man. I mean, just kind of bring me through uh, the emotions of, of getting your first win in the UFC. Not only doing that, but also, as you mentioned, you know, making that long flight across the world to get that win in, in enemy territory, too. I guess uh, what's going through your mind right now? Man, what's going through my mind is is this is exactly how I how I how I planned it to be, man. It's just it's just a blessing to be able to get the opportunity to do it. And I feel so confident, man, because the work that me and me and Flame put in is the best work that anybody is is doing out here in the game. Uh, nobody's nobody's doing drills like we're doing. Nobody's programming like we're doing. Nobody's tailing the game uh, like we're, we're doing. Nobody's the smart hard work like we're doing. You know, it's like it's like we're like pinky in the brain in, in this. And, you know, it's like crazy you know like we we just work so well together and i'm just i'm just feeling great man the 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 fans out here in perth are absolutely insane uh as they would say they're a bunch of sick cunts (laughs) (laughs) that's like a a really positive thing you know like you just don't want to be a horrible cunt (laughs) right and the cool thing is also we're lucky it's, it's how we're looking at things too like you know the the a lot of people are looking at a, a flight this long like oh such a long flight and we're looking at it more like dude it's like a it's it's a it's a beautiful flight you know not a lot of people get to do this we get to travel the world we get to see new new places that a lot of people will only dream about so we're very fortunate we take advantage of every every situation that we have right whether good or bad we try to turn it into a positive uh direction so you know we were in there we were talking we were reading books we were doing like really productive things we were yeah. not just sleeping away you know so we looked at it in a really positive way. Actually, it was it was so nice just to relax. Yeah. Yeah, and I got to feel like because you and your team have talked about, uh, you know, repeatedly of, of you know, you expected to be here. You expected to be in this position of getting your first UFC win. But I got to feel like, you know, seeing all the hard work pay off and, and seeing this dream come a reality, that's got to feel good, right? I mean, that's got to feel surreal to some extent. It's crazy, bro, because when I was 17 – I was in uh, inpatient treatment at Hazelden Plymouth in Minnesota, and I told everybody in there that I was a fighter and that I boxed and that I did all this, and I was lying through my teeth, bro. But in my head, like when I went in there, I was like, man, okay, I've been doing a lot of things that have put me in a bad situation and a bad mindset, and I'm obviously surrounding myself with people who aren't trying to make themselves better. So I want to make sure that I'm becoming somebody who I want to be and that person that I wanted to be at the time if I could be anything was uh was a UFC fighter so right when I got out I was like I was like I told I just started telling everybody I was like you're gonna be in the UFC you know I'm gonna be a professional fighter you know I'm gonna be a professional boxer you know I'm gonna win the golden gloves and uh I just hit the ground running as soon as I got out of treatment and I just uh, align myself with the people who I wanted to be like and those were all people who were larger than life like you walk into a boxing gym and you can just feel the presence feel the aura feel the energy of the people who are like hitters you know they have a different look in their eye a different a different a different gleam to their spirit you know and they they just have a certain aura to them and I feel like I feel like uh the person that I see on TV the person that I see in the pictures, the person that I I look at in the I used to look up to, you know, and I see that in my coach and everybody that I surround myself with my team, my boy Tokyo Lou, and uh who's also in my corner, my coach Adam, and just everybody everybody I'm around, man. It's a beautiful thing. Looking at the fight itself, obviously Shane Young is a guy with uh, a lot of experience in the UFC and other promotions too. Um, talk to me a little bit about the fight itself. What uh, what mid fight adjustments do you did you feel you had to make uh, adjusting to his style? Did anything about the fight surprise you at all? Uh, adjustments I, I make on the spot. You know, we we always make sure that we um, have 
have program movements and uh and and tailor a game specific to the fighter that we're going against but him not fighting for a while i think sometimes when people look at old tape they just think that they're going to fight that way Mm -hmm. and that people don't have the 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 capabilities to respond differently and change up their game and fights and i think that's an error in a lot of people's ways so we always focus on reading patterns and making sure that we uh can pick up on pattern recognition so um flame had a lot of reflex drills and game patterns uh uh, and game day patterns for me to read and pick up on so i could execute on that and so when when I was in there, I was able to see a lot of things and just use my lateral movement, and edges, and pullbacks to be able to to get in and out of the way of punches and and strikes and and you know everybody thought that I was just going to take the gra- the guy to the ground. There's no way Builder can stand up with a guy from City Kickboxing and mm-hmm. and beat him. Oh, Shane's got a lot of experience, you know, and and I think that also. Um, is a crutch that guys lean on too is, Oh, I have so much more experience over this guy. And, uh, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's a fallacy. It's a facade. It's a fugazi, you know, it's a, it's, it's something that they, they, they hold in their mind and, and believe is what's going to help them, them be better. But really we're, we're, we're drilling programs and, and tailoring our game to, to beat these guys. And it shows when we, when we show up that night. And every, everything is, is programmed work. You know, it's not just guesswork. You know, the minute that he's in there, I'm looking at the pros and cons of my fighter, the pros and cons of the other fighter, mm-hmm. the flinches, anything that they do repeatedly, patterns, if they breathe too heavy in certain punches, if they hold their breath before they exchange all those little details is what I'm looking at, and I'm feeding them back to my fighter as we go. I mean, one of my keywords can mean a lot, and he's looking out for those uh, positions. So that's where we really, like, once you get into the elite level like this, that's where the game really changes is the guys that are doing it with not only their fist, but with their mind, you know, and their heart. And that's where things change really crazy. Yeah, we got, we got like, we got, like, a, 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 a communication and language with, between us that – only we really understand and 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 so when his corner was calling for a lot of stuff i mean throw the three and i just see a big a big looping hook come and i'm like i'm like come on you guys got to be more prepared than that right. like get out of here with that and i and i gotta feel like you mentioned his activity level too and i, and I feel like with uh i think he's only fought like one time over the past few years so did you sense any tentativeness from him in the fight itself and any hesitancy just because of the top long layoff and all that Mm-mm. i mean he came in he came in game you know like like the la- the layoff uh you know maybe affected him but his game plan is is pretty much the same as it always is i think one error in his ways is he's he's um he's got good conditioning so it's hard to get him out of there mm-hmm. you know he's he's durable he's tough he could he can take some hits because we cracked him with some hard shots and uh and, and that full like had a poker face he didn't he didn't he didn't flinch back he didn't shy away too much uh on a couple shots where i hit him where i cracked him really good and um I think I think if he if he just did a different game plan and had a different approach, he could be more successful. But I feel I feel as though the game plan that we had against him and and just the way that we used our lateral movement to set up uh, to to set up shots and our combinations and and our and our flinches uh, to be able to create openings really really opened up uh some holes in his game uh i would have liked to got to get him out of there um but you know it doesn't always go it that way and uh i'm just i'm just glad that we 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 walked away with the win and we started our our ufc career and ufc debut out on the right foot and i promise that the next fights that come and we're coming we're really gunning for for a finish and and we're not we're not trying to be decision decision makers. We're not trying to leave it to the judges. We're we're gonna come in there and, and bring the noise. Yeah, and to add to that, just because he was off for two years, I mean, we don't look at our opponents like, oh, he's been gone for three years, right. two years, one year, whatever. Yep. And then just be like, we should have a advantage. We don't look at it like that. We look at every fight like it's a, a championship fight, 
and this could be the last fight ever. So we go in there ready to die if we have to. Um, that's the kind of mindset we have. We go in there, we prep, like everything's on the line. That's it. You know, we don't try to guess. We don't say it. Be prepared for anybody and for yeah. I think that's what also separates us. And uh, I got to get your thoughts, obviously, on the rest of the card, too. Obviously, a big, exciting main event between uh, Alexander Volkanovsky and Islam Makachev. Uh, did you get a chance to watch the fight? And uh, if so, how'd you score it? Yeah, we, uh, we stuck around. We went in, uh, showered up after the fight, and then uh, came came back right afterwards and you know we're fans of the sport so we 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 like going in there and 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 rooting for our guys that 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 are with uh, uh team iridium management shout out to jason and jacob and peter uh for for getting us here um but yeah we came back right away and and we we all thought that volk won but also at the same time you know we understand the rules of the game you know and and uh, Islam was able to land the takedowns and and hold him down and and uh, and you know even the round where like he had his back and he I just feel like that was a small error on 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 Volkanovski and small errors uh, in, in judgment in a in a in a in a in a situation can cost us uh, can cost us the fight you know and I think that's just what happened. Um, that's 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 all that happened. It's just like small little details in 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 the in the performance. But man, what a fight! I mean, the whole crowd was going crazy. We were screaming. The people around us were screaming. Uh, it was it was so much fun, man. The fight looked like a, it was a, honestly a two 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 to two uh, fight, and there was one pivotal pivotal round. I mean, I could see why the judges might have taken a little bit more of uh, Makachev sides. I mean, it looks like he was a little bit more in control at times. When he was on the ground so when when you're in those positions sometimes you know it looks like you're you're a little bit more in control of the the fight and what were your thoughts on uh yeah your rodriguez's win over uh josh Emmett? obviously i gotta ask you about the featherweight uh, interim title too yeah yeah you look great man we were uh we were signing posters with him and uh and just hanging out with him and his manager really cool guy man i i really i really i really like yair and i really respect him and he he came out and put on a beautiful performance that night man he uses distance very well he uses teeps to keep his distance stayed away from uh emmett's uh uh tight looping hooks and 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 good boxing and and really really showed that he's uh he he, he belongs in the top five and he uh he's now currently the the interim champion you know so my hat my hat my hat's off to him you know him and his team absolutely and uh i gotta get back to you man and uh ask a little bit about your time frame and the plan for 2023 i mean uh obviously we're just a few days removed from the fight but any idea in terms of uh a, a estimated time frame as to when we could see you fight again well, yeah, man. Uh, I just heard about uh, Adesanya Pereira too, so that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Um, but I'd like to I'd like to get back in there within like within two to three months for sure. I'd like to end up with four or five fights this year and uh, really, really, really keep making a statement and really keep showing people that hey, I'm not here to make decisions. I'm here to I'm I, and I'm not even here to take part. I'm here to take over. You know, I'm 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 here to I'm here to show that I'm the best in the world, and that and that you know, there's a there's a new kid on the block, and the sh and the show has arrived. You know, I told Dominic Cruz and Michael Bisping that, and I meant it, man. And and I'm gonna go about it in a cool, calm, and calculated manner. And we're we're gonna we're here to we're here to make noise. You know, we're here to go after the 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 top fifteen. Um, I just checked the rankings, and I'm number sixty three in the world. So. Uh, looks like we we moved up quite a bit, so I'm 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 happy to see that. Uh, it's a it's just a beautiful experience, man. 
And when you look at uh, outside of fighting, too, uh, one thing that's really stood out about you is obviously you're bringing awareness to uh, mental health issues and mental health awareness and yeah. coping and all that. I guess uh, talk to me a little bit about how much that means to you. And uh, do you feel like more athletes uh, should come out and tell their stories and, and you know, bring awareness to this issue? Yeah, man. I mean, the there's there's power and vulnerability. You know, you ain't got to tell your whole life story, you know, but I think it's important to, to let people know that, you know, even the, the strongest, the strongest people in the world, you know, still have fears too, still have feelings too, still have doubts too, still, still, still question themselves, still have uh suicidal thoughts, still um, have moments of depression. You know, I don't, I don't per se believe in depression anymore you know, just like I don't believe in ghosts, you know, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, Andrew Tate put it really well, man. He said that, you know, like two guys go into a house, one believes in ghosts, one doesn't believe in ghosts. The one hears a noise at night hmm, must be the wind goes back to sleep. One, the other hears a noise and, Oh my gosh, that's a ghost. It, and, and it's in the house and it's haunting me. And, you know, that's what depression is, man. And it's programmed into us. And we're programmed to believe that, that we're weak and that we can't conquer these things and we can't overcome them. And we can't be, uh, and we can't, and we have to be humble and we have to sit down and, and, and the definition of, hum of, of humble or humility is to have a, a low opinion of oneself. You know, I looked up the definition and, and, and you can't have a low opinion of yourself. You have to, you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe that you can overcome the things that are, are, are haunting you and you have to face those and you have to, you have to, you have to overcome them and, and be a bigger man. When my little brother took his life, man, the, 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 the one thing that I wanted to do was go into a corner and, 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 and hide and, and stuff my face with food and be depressed and and cry and i go to my, my my boy flame you know when my little brother took his life i i i had just met flame and 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 you know i lost a brother and gained one and i came to him and i was like hey bro it's like i'm just i'm i'm sorry i've been a little in my age you know i just i just came from georgia I just my my little brother took his own life and he was like he was like well Poppy, my condolences, but you know, life is what we make it. And he's like, so you know that 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 was that was his decision, and I'm I'm sorry about that. But we have a decision too, and and we have a decision right now to become the best in the world, and and we're gonna go and do that right now. So let's go get it. And you know, I'm hitting the bag, and I'm like all tense and tight. He's like, he's like, Papa, relax. He's like. He's like, act like you love your job and just, and, and he just like totally fixed my spirit, you know, just like surrounding yourself with good people who believe in you and, and see more than you in yourself than you, than you've ever seen in yourself and lift up your spirit like that. And, and, and people that don't get into this mode where everybody's feeling sorry for each other and, oh yeah, I'm so sorry. You should go and relax. It's like, no, fuck that. You going and relaxing is not helping. How about you go out and, and help somebody else out? How about you go and, and talk to somebody about that? How about you go and, and be of service? Because you sitting around and, 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 and moping around about something that you can't change isn't making it better. So me and my boy Flame, we got after it and, and we've just been on a mission. It's just been, it's just been incredible, man. Like, it's such a blessing, you know, he, he's, he was, he was with me through and through and my boy Lou, who was in the corner uh, with me, he's just like my homie. Uh, he was there when I got the call in the morning and he's been, he's been by my side this whole time, you know, so it's coming up on his one year anniversary and, and we all got to talk about this man, because it's, it's a, it, there's a lot going on and it can, and it can be prevented, you know, so we got to make sure that we're doing our part as men and even women you know but especially men and we gotta and we gotta know that we can we can we can we can fix this we don't have to feel like that anymore because i i've i've had suicidal thoughts and like 
felt depressed or sad since I was younger. And I, I just don't feel that way anymore. And it's because I realized that I, I don't have to feel that way anymore. I could feel sad or depressed for a moment, but I am not depressed. I'm not, it didn't hit me from the sky. I'm actually like depressed for life. You know, it's like, it's, 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 it's feelings that you feel and you feel that way for a reason because you need to change something in your life. It, that's what it, it's a sign that you need to change something in your life. And so I sought out those changes, you know, and, and, and when I saw, don't go there anymore. And will it always be like that? I'm not sure. But ever since then, ever since I, I heard that, uh, that you don't have to feel like that. You don't have to think like that. You don't have to be programmed like that. You can reprogram that and, and choose a different lifestyle. I've, I've chosen that. And, uh, I had a lot of guys hit me up recently and, uh, I directed them to the video that helped me or I gave them some words that helped me. And, and, and I hope it helps, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's tough. I've been there. I've been there my whole life, but I, I just don't go there anymore. And and it's an absolute blessing. That's awesome, man. And once again, I really do appreciate uh, your inspiring words, whether you know it or not, man, uh, you know, you're just getting started, but I'm sure you're inspiring a lot of fans and a lot of your supporters to, uh, you know, address these issues and, and to be open about it and to get after it. So uh, on behalf of them and, and, uh, and all that, I just want to say thank you for those words, man. I really do appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you giving me a platform to 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 say it on, man. You know, it's 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 so important. And you know, Flame lost his uh, little brother when he was younger. You know, so it's it's something that we both we've we've both been through. You know, my my little brother, his his was uh, you know an unfortunate death uh, from a car accident. Yeah, you got hit by it. You got run over by a car. Yeah. And, and my brother just, I don't know, he just took his own life, you know, and he's, yeah. he's got two kids, you know, so it's, it's, it's just, it's just crazy, man. Like, like his, his daughter, Catalea, so beautiful, man. I got to see her over Christmas time and there's just so much motivation, man. Like no matter where you are, or who you are, or what you're going through or what's happening in your life, man, like there's so many people that love you and there's so much, there's so much life to live, you know, it, we, we, we just gotta, we just gotta seek out the answers and really, really put our best foot forward to, to try and, um, to try and bring awareness to what is making us feel so bad and, and, uh, and, and learn to correct that and, and do simple daily disciplines to be able to make ourselves feel better, to be able to think better, you know, because, if we can think better, then we'll feel better. And if we feel better, we'll act better. And if we act better, the result is. Well, I really do appreciate the time, man. Uh, before we wrap things up here, I'll uh, give you the uh, platform to uh, give out any shout outs to your team. I see you got your coach there. Uh, shout out to yeah. the rest of the featherweight division if you want. I'll uh, give you the final word, man. Awesome. I appreciate it, man. Shout out to Fuego Delta 8. Uh, my boys up at uh, uh, Rhino Rush Drip Drop, all my coaches um you know my my brother flame for real uh he's 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 the best in the world man i'm telling you like me and this guy are, are really taking over um you know so shout out to him you can follow him at flaming hot mitts um me at blake the builder uh shout out to my my uh jiu-jitsu coach felipe fogelin up at Tri triumpho for coach cam. giving me that black belt yeah my coach coach cam at real speed USA and uh you know shout out to my little brother you know uh he 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 uh he gave it his all you know but the world was just too much for him and uh and uh shout out to my mom you know it's a it's her birthday so it was a beautiful it's a beautiful gift to her to be able to 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 give her give her a victory and and watch one of her sons you know just do something that is something of a miracle you know to go out and enemy territory and do that so and shout out to you man thank you for thank you for giving us a platform to talk on and 
and uh, and just be real with and have a cool conversation with, man. You're a real one for real. Absolutely, man. And uh, it was great to meet you. Great to chat with you and your coach. And uh, I have a feeling this is definitely going to be the first of many times we'll be speaking in the future, man. So I really do appreciate it. Absolutely, man. I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to more interviews in the future and what what the future holds for for the both of us. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. God bless.